This video here has an overall click-through rate of 7%, which isn't that bad really. But when I click inside the traffic source of the video, which is the part of your analytics which shows you where your views come from inside and outside of YouTube, you can see that it's almost 19% when discovered in search. Which without getting too excited is quite high. So lesson number one here, before we even get started, your goal for a video can really determine your thumbnail's design and effectiveness. And if all you care about is search views for a video, then this metric here is what you need to base the results of your thumbnail on. Not this one. The average click-through rate often isn't helpful because it's the average smaller your traffic source combined and they can be really wildly different. One big reason this video's click-through rate is so high in search is down to the fact this thumbnail follows the steps I'm going to show you in this video right now to help you do the same. And also at the end, I'll run over one big old factor that means even the best thumbnails in the world still get low click-through rates. But I need to warn you, this information can come with an element of sacrifice too, because views from different traffic sources can have different rules when it comes to thumbnail design. So what works in one could potentially hinder the other. I'm gonna show you what I mean. So this same video I showed you right at the start in Browse Features, which is your homepage views and subscriber views, the click-through rate is like 1%. Basically means that when this video popped up on someone's homepage to people YouTube thought might be interested in it, they were not. <laughs> Which is the big difference between homepage views and search views. Search people select what topic they want to appear on YouTube based on what they type in. The other, YouTube basically decides what they display to them based on their viewing habits and interests. If you're making videos where your main goal is to rank in search, try some of these rules. Firstly, you gotta make it flipping obvious. Thumbnails for search are not always about incredible design work. It can be as simple as showing someone the exact thing they are looking for. So if you're making a review of a product, you can just show that product because that is what the searcher is interested in. Doing that is the simplest way to trust in your thumbnail design. It's about speed of recognition here, but there is of course a problem with that because what if the thing someone searches for isn't an item, but information? So let me show you how you might be able to get around that. This video is a simple tutorial. It's about how to add a featured channel to your homepage. And if we're honest, it's a pretty flipping ugly thumbnail, but the image matches the searcher's intent. And that's why in search, it's got a super high click-through rate. One of the reasons anyway. The thumbnail works because anyone searching can say, that is the thing I am looking for. And then they just click it. <laughs> it just sounds too simple, this. So you can see why this wouldn't work in other places on YouTube, right? Even to people who know what a featured channel is, it's not that obvious what I've made there, unless you have a featured channel question in your front of mind. So if you don't have an item to use in your thumbnails, you need to think about how you can use other imagery in it to quickly represent that topic of their query. So two, use text, text that a searcher can recognize far. So if your title is long, I wouldn't recommend just putting the whole thing on there, but just to pull out keywords from the title that will be of most interest to your viewer to help it jump off the page. The video I made on thumbnail basics will help you. This is another example. I hate this thumbnail, the passion. It's old, but it's got a 19% click-through rate in search. It's about copyright, which you can probably guess from the image. And it's just me and the copyright sign. That's it. Again, just showing people what they want to see worked. <laughs> now, there are of course other ways too. So this thumbnail here does not go by the simple rule of showing people something they are looking for, but instead it targets showing what the searcher is feeling in that moment of time. So when someone has a problem, the solution doesn't just solve an issue in a lot of cases, but it removes a negative feeling. And really that's the thing we don't want in our lives. So another side to this is to target the emotion your searcher might be feeling that has caused them to look at your video. And one simple way of doing this is by the expression on your face. So this example, with another very high click-through rate in search, just targets the panic people have when they get a copyright strike. And that's it. That's probably what they're feeling at that moment. And the little copyright sign helps too, but emotion overpowers all. So if you think you can work out the negative emotion your searcher has, convey that in your thumbnail. Four, design against the top search terms. Now this by no means is a method of making thumbnails for search. It is 100% accurate, but it's a good guide and it might give you more direction than just plucking a design out of thin air. So YouTube will show different search results to different users depending on their location and their viewing history and so on. So what I try and do to get as close to sticking out in search as I can within the top 10 results is to simply design the way my thumbnail looks to stick out amongst the top videos for that search term. But in order to do that, you need to check them incognito. So if I look and the top three are all green, I don't use my green background, I go for the purple option because it draws the eye. And that brings us on to the elephant in the room. 
So there is one giant problem with thumbnails and click-through rates. And that is in search, the higher your videos rank, the more clicks you will probably get just anyway. So look at this graph for click-through rates on Google. Now I tried to find this for YouTube, just couldn't. I can't see why these would be that drastically different. Sure, YouTube has thumbnails which help a ton. It would be pretty obvious to state that first and second place are gonna get more clicks than third and fourth, right? Now you can see that the top ranking websites on Google get 23% of the clicks, then second gets 20%, and then in fifth, well, it's just way less. So the issue is, YouTube counts an impression as when 50% of the thumbnail loads, and your click-through rate is based on the amount of people who click on a video when it is impressed to them. So anyone searching on a desktop will have at least three videos or four videos shown to them as an impression for anything they search. And on a phone, it's at least two. Which means if you designed the best thumbnail on the history of the planet ever, if the video's watch times and average view durations weren't good enough, it might only place the video in third. By default, we'll get less clicks than first place just because of where it sits. Because a great thumbnail won't outrank great content. YouTube does an amazing job of working this out, but that is the issue with thumbnails, especially for smaller and newer channels. There are just so many things that impact that number and how effective they are outside of the actual thumbnail. And that's why I think when it comes to search, keeping to what I've shown you today will save you a lot of time and bother. In the next video, I'm gonna talk you through designing thumbnails to stick out on the YouTube homepage, which is just really complex again. Why isn't this easy?